I do want to thank Chairman Rhea. I want to thank the management at Rutgers Houses and the TA President, Michael Steele, for hosting us this evening. Please. Now, I, I talked to Chairman Ray and invited him to co-host this meeting because this is a crucial time for public housing. I'm glad to see such a, uh, a large crowd out tonight. Um, you know, it's been, uh, a, the year has gotten off to a good start. Uh, we got a lot of work to do and we can only get it done if we're having conversations like this one. So uh, I just want to thank all of you for being here tonight. Uh, three out of four respondents, this is the thing that hit me the most, right? Three out of four people said they're fearful. Three out of four, 75%. I mean, we, I, there, there's no community that any of us would describe as healthy and vibrant if three out of four people are fearful. And so for me, this hit me really hard. You know, I, I, I'm, I grew up in Detroit, we had high crime and, you know, but I can tell you, I had my moments, but I wouldn't have described my state as being fearful of where I lived on a daily basis. And, and, and so, and most New Yorkers, I don't think, would say that they are fearful on a daily basis. And so, I don't know, all I can go by is what the research said. And when I get three out of four people telling me they are fearful, I know we have an issue and we need to address it very aggressively and we need to address it collectively with the community. Right? This is not one person's issue, this is not just a law enforcement issue, this is not just a NYCHA management issue, this is not just a resident's responsibility, this is our collective responsibility to each other and to our children to ensure that this is not what they experience as they leave their home every day. Um, so we're committed. We're committed to work with you. We don't think it's going to be an easy task, but we believe we can, ad we can address it. We, we, we have commitment from uh, City Hall, we've got commitment from uh, law enforcement leadership, uh, and we have commitment from resident leadership. So with that, I believe we will win uh, on this issue. Um, based on the survey data, we found you know, a number of other things, and I'm going to go through some of this fast, but it's, it's the things that you know, basically insult your basic decency as a, as a person, um, as someone who loves the community that you live in, you pay your rent, you expect to be able to enjoy your home, uh, and when you have urination and stairways and lobbies, when you have broken doors and, and loitering, it erodes your sense of safety and security. Even if you haven't been a victim of crime, that doesn't make you feel good about the place you live. It doesn't make you feel protected. It doesn't make you feel secure. So as a management perspective, we have to make sure that things like the doors are secure. Right? That's a basic commitment we make to you and that we have to deliver on. And so we're committed to that. And we recognize that that's not just sending more people out to fix them faster. We've got to figure out how we minimize the vandalism. We have to figure out how we make it harder to vandalize. We have to figure out how we work with you residents on Resident Watch and other things to help us deal with those smaller percentages of the population who are causing you know, 80, 90 percent of the problems. Um, uh, and so, one of the things that we've been spending a lot of time on really is around that, which is why are our security measures so compromised? Um, and why is vandalism so high? And what can we do to be smart about tackling that? And this is where I said we wanted to align what we're learning with our, not just our policies and procedures, but where, where and how we spend our money and how we advocate with our elected officials on what we do with the money that they provide to us. And so some of the conversations we've been having right now is around Im improving uh, the security measures in the buildings. Layered access, which we'll talk about a little bit, um, is very important uh, because there's not only that the doors are easily vandalized, but there's, they're compromised in the sense that there are many keys out there. When we issue a key to a resident, if you make copies, and then let's say even a resident is no longer living in NYCHA, they still have access to those keys. They don't turn those keys back in. Those keys still exist. So even if the doors are fixed, too many people have access to our premises that don't deserve to have access to our premises. Um, the majority of our intercom, intercoms many times in different developments are down. And when an intercom is down, it creates real issues, right? Even if you're a, you know, you know quote unquote, you know, law abiding citizen and resident and your intercom is down, you know, it creates, you know, even an incentive for you at times to prop the door ajar, leave it open, do whatever you have to do, frustration on young people's parts to get in and out of the buildings. And so, 
basic things in terms of service performance that leads to uh, vandalism we can fix. But the intercoms are highly dependent on the telephone company infrastructure, which oftentimes uh, has been compromised. And many families don't necessarily have a traditional Verizon line. If you don't have a Verizon line, you don't have access to your intercom. Well, that's a legacy issue that we need to fix. We need to invest and make those changes. Um, technology has changed, the world has changed. Some families don't have phones at all. They have a cell phone, right? They don't have a phone in their household, therefore they don't have access to their intercom. So there are a lot of things around physical design and changes that NYCHA hasn't been able to keep up with, uh, before, some for financial reasons and some because we need to prioritize this. Um, we are going to uh, a recommendation around layered access control. Many electeds have put money into fund CCTV. NYCHA doesn't fund CCTV directly out of our capital dollars. We rely on elected officials who get a lot from you all in terms of prioritizing your development for cameras. They put up the money and then we actually implement the, the CCTV in the, in, in the developments. Um, we have did a bunch of research and looked at the effectiveness of CCTV alone. And we found that, unfortunately, um, it, it is a part of a solution, but it is not the solution. Uh, and you know, unless that CCTV is a monitor system, like a Viper system, where law enforcement is actually real time observing it, um, it, it doesn't create the reduction in criminal activity that we're looking for. Um, and so we want to move not just to CCTV, but to a layered approach where securing the doors, enhancing the intercoms, having electronic access to buildings, us being able to control that access, um, open the doors electronically and remotely when they need to be, um, to secure them, smart doors that tell us when a door has actually been vandalized, so we'll have that information back at a central area. We can dispatch people to fix it. There's a lot of basic stuff that will allow us to serve you better, both to prevent it from being vandalized from the beginning, but also if it happens to be vandalized, to have detection and communication and smart systems to tell us that, and then also for us to be able to modularly fix it in the field quickly, as opposed to some guy showing up with a couple of tools and not having the supplies that he or she needs, as opposed to being able to modularly take out the pieces that have been vandalized and to replace them uh, in the case of the intercom. So we've been working very hard on, on you know, working with uh, visiting housing authorities across the country, both public housing authorities as well as private um, uh, uh, um, multi-unit buildings uh, within New York, outside of New York, and looking at what's, what's out there, what's state of the art, what are other people using. And so we're going to move to a different type of door and secure. We're going to move to a different type of intercom um, in order to, uh, to ensure that. So, and we're going to move to uh, away from traditional keys that are easily copied and distributed and hard to get back to electronic access. Um, where if someone moves out, we turn that electronic fob off. That doesn't work anymore. We've, dis we've turned it off. They're no longer, uh, so they don't have to turn it back into us. We control it remotely and centrally through a computer. Um, so there, there's smart things that we can do that help on this kind of a side of a managerial uh, investments, but it's not in and of itself uh, sufficient to, uh, to solve the problem. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on, on, on CCTV except to say, we look not only at the effectiveness of CCTV, but how can we uh, get more out of the dollars we're spending on CCTV. Right now, we hadn't had unification and standardization of the kinds of TVs we were install, uh, the cameras we were installing, which makes it harder and more expensive for us to maintain. Um, we also uh, didn't have interconnectivity. Those cameras actually don't transmit data back to a central security base in which we can uh, remotely observe uh, through, through the, uh, the, the camera's activity. Uh, and, so, and, and they need to be maintained out in the field in areas that, uh, that are very difficult. So um, we're going to make big changes there. Meeting with your elected officials, we've met with every elected official who has money in the CCTV bucket. We've asked them to move that money to this layered access approach in which cameras are a piece of it, but in which the doors, the intercoms, and, and, uh, and, and the key fobs are also a piece of it. Uh, and we will be coming out to talk to um, residents about the plan to get your feedback and input uh, so that we can aggressively move forward. We're deploying it right now at Mott Haven in the Bronx. Um, we received an award, uh, a competitive grant from HUD to implement it at Mott Haven. They were excited about what we proposed. Uh, they thought it was state of the art. Um, and uh, we, we will obviously 
create baseline information about the level of crime statistics and vandalism now and look at it once we've implemented that system and see what kind of benefits we receive from it.